All right, everybody, we're going to ask a question. Who was Seth in generation two? So let's do a brief overview of the periodic table of history as usual. Uh, this is uh, 6,000 years of history over here on the y-axis, and then we have the equator axis going to the left and right. And we can zoom in and out of this project and see what's what. So we're zooming in right here. What's going on right here? 1924, Pablos Cantoriotis. Don't know if I got that one right, but that's in the Second Hellenic Republic in 1924. Uh, the only reason for doing that is so we can see the scope of what we're we're looking at that we can zoom into this project and and we can also zoom out so that we can get very great detail of the scope of history we're going to look at hebrew history so we need to be right here here's the time of jesus and we have the flood right about here ah, and these arrows keep on trying to connect to everything but we'll try to thwart them thwart the arrows you can zoom in here and what we're looking at the scope of what we're looking at is we can see adam here and cain and abel and then we're going to be talking today about seth the second generation creation from God. So Adam was the first generation and Seth is the second generation. You can see his, his uh, uh, lifespan. According to the Masoretic text, he was born 130 years after Adam was created. And so that puts him somewhere around 3,986 BC to 3,074 BC quite a span. He'd be probably a really good storyteller. And so let's get a circle around this whole area and then we can zoom out and see this huge scope of history. So you can see the scope of history right there. So let's go back in here, make the uh, something that we can see a different color, not just the text. So, so here you are with Seth. I highly recommend reading Genesis 3 and 4 to get the historical context according to the Hebrew record. And the text gives us the dates and the story sequence. The genealogy is in Genesis chapter 5, if you're curious about that. Now, there's very little detail in the Hebrew record. Um, we get the name, we get the date, and then the name of Seth is Sheth when we go to 1 Chronicles. Instead of being spelled S-E-T-H, it's S H. E-T-H. And then there's a reiteration of the genealogy because Dr. Luke, in Luke chapter 3, he was authenticating the genealogy of Jesus. All these references are, are the extent of the Hebrew record. So we can go to a theme. In Genesis 3, 14 and 15, we, we go back to the temptation of Eve and Adam. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And we can go a little bit further farther, Genesis 4, 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. You can sense the hope of Eve that a descendant of Eve is going to defeat the serpent. So we also observe people started to call on the Lord. Interesting. Is this when prayer started? Because after a complete debacle, the righteous line of Adam started figuring out they couldn't run their lives on their own. So prayer to God is started. Genesis, the book of origins. When we go outside of Genesis, there are tidbits about Seth. 
there is a Jewish book called Agada. It's in the Midrash and the Talmud. And also there is the Greek Apocalypse of Moses. And Josephus is a huge work. He has a huge work called The Antiquities of the Jews, with these uh, conversations in the, in the Agada and the Greek Apocalypse of Moses. One story that stands out is uh, about a sickly Adam. Sickly Adam is lying there before he dies. Eve and Seth unsuccessfully go to the Garden of Eden to beg an angel for some oil medicine from the tree from inside the Garden of Eden. Now, they wish to give the medicine to Adam, but the angel of Eden doesn't give in. It's a curious story that you can attain by, by reading these uh, non-biblical references. Uh, the, the book of Agatha is not authorized. It's unlike the Masoretic text. But uh, the Agata is curious and interesting, and, and like everything, each person must believe it or not, just like if they guess that lightning hitting an ocean causes a cell to form. Well, come to think of it, I've seen lightning hit oceans, and the ocean has so many water molecules that the electrons distribute in the water and nothing happens. Hmm. Well... Getting back to the Hebrew book of Genesis and the theme of prayer, uh, I believe prayer is a real form of communication between God and man, and I am happy to find its origin in the line of Seth. So in conclusion, I hope this information is helpful to the curious seeker of truth. I hope the viewer can see the scope of history and understand the contents much better. And uh, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic week.